an example, let me show you guys um, internet user experience. Um, so, all right, let me clear this filter, right? So at this site, you know, we will, over here, let me just make this bigger, right? We'll sort of specify, okay, there are 163 total hours of internet user experience issues. Only 6% of them correlated with bad wireless performance. So at the same time, you know, they're going to Google, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, the wireless was bad, right? But anecdotally, somebody could come say, hey, the wireless sucks here, right? That's why all our problems are happening, or the internet link sucks. But this is, you know, hard data to say, well, we correlated it. You can dive even further to look at, you know, clients and things like that and see the graphs or whatever that correlate to, or that, that um, you know, are part of this and actually sort of verify, no, 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 you're, you know, you're full of it or whatever. No, this is actually what's going on. It has nothing to do with this or nothing to do with that. Um, and I'll show you with WAN, you'll sort of get another piece here, which is, is it the internet, right? Um, and and um, so that's, that's the other side. Yeah. So this is one. The other view that makes a big difference uh, to exactly what you're talking about is let me, I can open this up in uh, network history. So if I you know, show you the, the network history, and you know, this is something we can view for you know, the last you know, two months, six months, multiple years, actually, that, that you can view this data. But this is what's telling us that how my environment has changed across time. Right? And if I made a change, Let's say I invested in a new internet link. So the metric we're looking at is internet performance. So I you know, bought a bunch of new bandwidth or whatever it is um, for that. Well, did it actually decrease the percentage of users having poor internet experience? Or did it completely stay the same, meaning it had no, no effect whatsoever? And where's the proof of that? Yeah. Right? Um, what we're doing with these baselines and keeping track of them over time is sp are precisely answering that question for enterprises of give me quantifiable data based on you know, doing the same thing over and over again. So apples to apples comparisons that prove, hey, I made this change. Did it have a positive effect? Did it have a negative effect? No effect whatsoever. Or tell me that things are trending better or trending worse or whatever and prove it. Right? And so that's the other side that a lot of enterprises use yeah. um, to, to, to look at this. So how do you guys handle one of the things that's always been a challenge for me in baselining is, you know, it's it sounds great and you get into it and then you go whatever vendor you're dealing with, they're like, well, yeah, you can baseline all this stuff and then you get into it and they're like, well, this is really slowing the system down, so you got to go delete all that data that you really wanted, you know, so, that you can, <laughs> so that you can like, you know, deal with the new data. But then you may care about, you know, if you know, I worked in enterprise retail for a while. I may care about what it looked like last Christmas, right, right. before Black Friday. Yep. Yeah. And I yeah, want to yeah. be able to keep that data and not delete it to speed the system up. How do you guys deal with that? Yeah. So, I mean, there are aggregations, but so in the system, the rawest data, right, which I haven't showed you guys yet, right, on a client basis, raw graphs, charts, events that the clients go through, that stuff is, you know, the granularity of it um, is minute by minute or instantaneous if it's events. We keep that for two weeks. Okay. The baselines is a far more summarized piece of data that we actually keep for multiple years, precisely because of the use case that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, that people want to know, hey, last Christmas or the Christmas before, now, what does that look like in comparison? Um, so yeah, different types of data within the product get kept for different time periods for, for that reason. Yeah. And it hasn't slowed the system down yet. So. Yeah, and, and killed it. That's <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. Um, uh, so so this, is, this is the other view. The last view that I'll just quickly show you, again, to just kind of level set you know, some of the differentiation in the product is something we call benchmarking. And this is another example of sort of cloud sourcing data, right? So we're looking at this one particular site, the Schomburg site. We're on internal right now, but I can switch this over to industry as well, right? So, you know, that web baseline or whatever, right? It, you know, the average was around 1% or thereabout. The Wi-Fi performance baseline, the average is around 13% or whatever it is. A question arises, is that good or bad? And how do I know, right? So what we do, given that we came in from the cloud and even our on-premise solution still does, it's an opt-in in terms of giving statistical data back to the overall cloud, we can compare you to similar sites whether internally or whether across the uh, industry. 
So we can say, all right, you're an enterprise, you're running you know, Aruba Networks as an example, you have approximately this many clients in your environment. Well, what, do, what does that compare to with similar enterprises with the same number of clients, same number of, um, uh, or same wireless vendor and so on? Um, and you know, we're gonna add you know, the ability to segment this by radius vendor or you know, DHCP vendor and all that kind of stuff as well. But this gives you some kind of objective view a little bit of your problems or you know, not having problems. And you, know, you find different enterprises react differently. Um, you know, enterprises that have a lot of sites tend to prefer the internal comparisons, right? I just wanna look at my sites compared to each other because I'm replicating the config across all of them, right? And I wanna see how this stacks up. Other customers say, you know what? Um, we, we have a really good network in general. We have a really good environment. So even though this is the worst amongst our site, I want to be able to prove to my boss that this is really, really good compared to the industry, right? So being the worst across our sites, you know, doesn't mean anything. It's, it's still really good. And this is data that's in the product that, you know, is accessed from sort of a cloud repository that gives you that objective, uh, objective piece, right? So that's, that's sort of another element uh, of, of this. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, I, I, a couple of correlation examples that I've talked about so far uh, have been around you know, web performance and correlating with wireless performance as an example. Another example of that, actually, if I just quickly go back to that health and remediations page with all the, all the filters, if I select, uh, let me open this up and just go back to overall in the environment and select um, you know, clients not connecting uh, because of radius. So this is an example over here. If I open this up, what we're doing is on the span port, right, L looking at live packet data, we can see what's going on with the radius latencies uh, and the radius protocol interactions that clients are, are seeing. From the syslog data that we're getting from the radius server, totally separate, we can actually get the reason codes of exactly why a particular radius transaction failed. Right? And then from the wireless side, we can get uh, what you know, access points or what um, you know, uh, type of operating system or the username of the clients and so on. We can get that data from that side. So when you see something like this of, okay, this is how many total hours of radius failures we've seen or client hours of radius issues that we've seen. And this is how it's broken down by these different reason codes. This is where it's happening. This is how it's happening and so on. These are multiple data sources coming in and us correlating them. Similarly, the web and the wireless, or you know, as I'll talk about in a sec, the WAN and application performance is multiple data sources, again, coming together to give that end-to-end -end perspective of what's actually happening. So. Okay, cool. So the next thing I'm gonna do, um, so I've kind of, this is just sort of a high level view of, of, of the product, just a kind of level set. Now introducing something like WAN, I'll, I'll start there. Can I ask you a quick question? Oh, sure, yeah. skip to that and, oh, go ahead, yeah. So you've got remediation suggestions. Have you guys yeah. ever looked into dynamic remediation, like actually actioning on remediation, <laughs> or are you, is that, is that a bridge too far? <laughs> no, it's a good question. It's, it's very sort of related to the question earlier. Um, so far, um, the way people have done it is via APIs. Mm -hmm. So pulling the insights and pulling the recommendations out and sort of writing their own scripts. Um, you know, we found that that's a slippery slope because yeah. there's so many vendors and software versions and whatever sure. else um, to, to sort of go down. A lot of customers have asked us, hey, you're doing all of this. This action makes sense. Make Why the bad man go just, away. Just do it, right? <laughs> so we're thinking about it, right? And we're sort of considering it. I, I think the ideal way for us would be via partnership to actually enable the change, right? You know, any kind of orchestration or automation or whatever requires both the analytics piece as well as the management piece. And we've kind of stayed away from the management piece just to kind of focus all our attention on the analytics piece, which, as you can see, is not a trivial problem. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it would probably so you guys be are exploring way. partnerships with orchestration engines so that if you say, look, you know, this channel is this channel is jammed up. You don't need to be on this channel for this AP. Just take it out. Maybe one day, yeah. you know, an orchestration engine that could control a wireless controller could say, hey, let's, let's totally, put it on that 5G right? channel. I mean, like some of those radius. One, one thing oh, you sorry, do yeah. is um, potentially like an outbound webhook. 
Yes. Um, similar yep. to you know GitHub webhooks. That's so. like our Slack integration. Right. Is like exactly Slack that. Integration. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you get the alert that comes in. You send the alert to the orchestration system, yep. and then the, the orchestration system has the additional intelligence as to whether or not it's going to act on that particular action. Yep. No, totally, totally. Um, we just have to wait for the orchestration systems to support webhooks. <laughs> but definitely, I mean, that's, that's definitely part of it, as in most orchestration systems today in like customer environments. And you know, one of the big things about our product is when we go into a customer environment, we don't want them to change anything. Right? It's brownfield through and through. Just point data at us from what you have today and we'll give you insight. Right? Um, you know, but in terms of orchestration systems then, what we see in typical customer environments is the orchestration is really the CLI. <laughs> right? And so that's the API. It's not webhooks, it's not you know, REST APIs or GraphQL or anything like that. It's, it's at that level. I think as orchestration systems get better and better and more prevalent in these environments and the APIs into them, get more sort of um, kind of vendor, vendor agnostic, if you will, um, I think you know, that'll, that'll help in a big way in terms of systems feeding back in and, um, and actually affecting the change. So, okay, so um, I'm switching uh, customers over here in terms of one of the customers that, that have added NetFlow into the solution. And what you're, this is a university customer, and um, what you're looking at over here so when you add Netflix to this, there's a couple of things that happen. So you actually get a separate app, right? So you get the WAN app and you get the Campus app, which is our, our traditional app. Value goes into both of them from NetFlow data, right? And, and, and I'll show you that in a sec in terms of correlating different things. But the Campus app is more focused around users and user experience. The WAN app is more focused around routers, router interfaces, and, and that kind of detail, right? And so, as I talked about earlier, on, on the WAN side, what we're doing here is we're sort of sorting the different sites by you know, this notion of a high link utilization minute. So the high link utilization minute is the analog to the client hour of, of problems. And so we're trying to introduce, again, as I said, you know, we're coming to a world that was very anecdotal. And so we're trying to introduce like, quantifiable terms. Um, we'll see if these are the right ones, but you know, so far they, they, they've been reasonably received in terms of client hour and this new one, link utilization minute, or high link utilization minute. But this is just a summary across all of the router interfaces. Um, this might be hard to see, so let's zoom in over here, right? So this is a Com Comcast intercampus link, right? And basically, you know, there's 19,800 total minutes of usage, um, but 58 of them were high. Right, and today I think we use high, uh, we use 50% by default uh, as being high link utilization, but we'll make that, we'll allow people to configure that. Um, and here's a summary of who the biggest culprits are. You know, Office 365 has been the top, you know, um, trafficked application in 20 of those 58 minutes. And this particular IP address, whatever this is, uh, has been the top, um, this private IP actually, because this university owns a big space or whatever of private IPs, uh, has been the top uh, you know, culprit in 35 of those minutes, right? Um, and so this is just the high level summary. You know, this are, here's another interface, and this interface has a different characteristic. YouTube was the, the top app culprit. This is the top IP culprit and so on. Um, but you, know, you can kind of get this high level view over here. You can kind of get in, jump into a particular interface and sort of see additional data and, now, as I kind of called out earlier, down here is really the summary of, of this information, where these are the time periods where we notice these minutes going high. And if you want the answer to the question, hey, you know, 9 to 10 AM today, you know, nobody could access the internet or it was really bad, what actually happened? You can go back to 9 to 10 AM today or whatever and, and click here and basically see, OK, in that, you know, Office 365 for 12 of those minutes was the highest trafficked app. That's how much traffic. You know, that particular source IP, you know, you'll notice something here where this IP address, again, I'll zoom, whoops, <laughs> zoom in here or whatever. That particular source IP transmitted 76 gigs uh, in that 19 minutes versus the next highest source IP was like 37 megs, right? 
maybe that's to be expected. <laughs> maybe it's not. Right? <laughs> maybe it's uh, you know. See how much email I get. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gigabytes of email. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you know, this is this is kind of just high level. You know, interface level. Um, you know, let me deep dive into the interface. The other side of it is more of a um, you know traffic view. Um, if I sort of go back over here, this is a little bit more traditional on the traffic side of just saying what, what application used the most traffic on these different interfaces. Um, you know, what percentage of the peak utilization did, did these uh, applications take and, and so on. Um, so, you know, you can select an application here, you know, if I select Facebook or YouTube or something like that, right? And add that in there, you know, this, this gives you that view across the different sites of how much application traffic order it by peak utilization where it's sort of taking up the biggest percentage of just the peaks versus just ignoring sort of the aggregates, right? So, you know, if you had a particular data center application as an example, maybe overall YouTube is always the highest trafficked app, but in the minutes where things go bad, maybe this data center application is actually the worst uh, offender. And that's something you might want to see, you know, across the different sites and so on. So this is one side of it. Um, and you know this sort of because we're focusing more on routers and interfaces, and maybe even the people looking at this data might be sort of a different set of folks than the wireless or user campus folks. We've kind of put this in a different app, and you know the idea for you know the overall plat Voyance platform is to keep adding applications as well, and you know I can talk about that in a little bit too. But the other side of it is all about users. So going to the campus side of this, and on the campus side. Um, if I go to this health and remediation page that I was looking at before, what you'll see here is, let me zoom in a bit, sorry, and select, um, I don't know, Office 365 performance, as an example, right? So now when I do Office 365, so the first metric it was on was wireless. Wireless obviously has no relation to router interfaces, right? Uh, or RF doesn't at least, right? But Office 365 definitely goes over router interfaces. Um, and so what you're looking at here is, again, you know, we'll do the same thing down here. This is wired network versus Wi-Fi, right? What percentage of the time it correlates, right? And over here, um, actually, there's a bug here in the sense that these are completely unintelligible, but they really should be names, <laughs> right? That Comcast interconnect or, you know, this particular service provider link or whatever it is. These are the different router interfaces, and you can see here that, you know, in this case, it's not that much of a difference, 1.1% of performance versus 0.7% of performance. But you know, you could have a case here where one router interface is really, really bad. Maybe it's a slow link or it's, it's a sh uh, slower link, but for some reason, a lot of stuff is getting routed over it and you're seeing performance suffer there versus performance being really good on these other, other links and you can kind of optimize your, your, uh, your WAN configurations and so on. But this is the notion of, again, this data source comes from NetFlow. The wireless data source comes from, the, comes from the wireless controller. The application performance, so Office 365 performance per se, is us identifying clients going to Office 365 and looking at TCP latency and TCP retransmits. So it's on that side of it, that's coming from that data source in terms of actually looking at the packet data and extracting that. So it's all about putting these multiple data sources together and giving you that end-to-end -end, end -end picture. So, any questions here? Otherwise, I'll, I'll jump to the client agent next. Um, and I definitely want to save a couple of m minutes uh, before this ends to talk about the whole Apple Cisco stuff, which is another interesting, uh, interesting little side project we did. <laughs> Maybe so, you touched yeah. on this or sure. the, the packet data that you're looking at, are you capturing those packets and able to view them in this, or is the operator available to view them in, in the <laughs> system as well, or that's where you offload them to a different tool to be able to dive into the application? It's interesting. A lot of customers ask us, because we get the packet data. It's on the on-site uh, mechanism, the crawler, as we call it. That's the thing that sees the packets. And we only extract the metadata about application performance and all that kind of stuff. That's what we send to the back end. But customers are like, well, can you take a PCAP from, me from that thing, too? <laughs> um, it's something we haven't done to date. We might do it in, in the future. But we've kind of been more focused on, well, why do you need the PCAP? Because we're already collecting all these metrics and giving you all this insight. 
but there's always a reason to get a PCAP. <laughs> People are still addicted to PCAP. <laughs> exactly. I think you need to stand your ground on that and go, like, <laughs> why? Greg, even we get beaten down at some point. Uh, <laughs> customers who ask, for, or ask me to give them PCAPs so they can do a bandwidth uh, troubleshooting. Right. PCAPs not going <laughs> right, <Yeah. exactly. laughs> yeah, to. It certainly depends on the use case. Which part What's of the view is it in, yeah. S, in, S2, in stupid? Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> just, this reliance on PCAPs needs to finish. I do think. <laughs> right. Because when we get to TLS 1.3, it won't be helpful. It won't be helpful. Exactly. I mean, we're already looking yep. at like 60% of internet traffic is TLS 1.3. Like 60% is HTTP. <laughs> you know, there is yep. no other protocols. Having yep. a packet capture won't help you. Totally. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, really. it's, it's very true. I mean, so so far we've, we've stood our ground, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I would be asking for written submissions as to why. <laughs> 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 really. show, show me a video of you using Wireshark and <laughs> getting the <inside>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those features a vendor can put in just to sort of like say that they've done something really intelligent. <laughs> It's kind of like a trivial feature. It doesn't add anything, I don't think. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, no, no, I mean, the, the goal of, you know, like going back to the question around network analytics, if network analytics being, ends up being about taking PCAPs, I think we've all failed at <laughs> what we're trying to do. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so the other thing, uh, uh, I'm gonna switch environments again, actually. Um, this is actually our office environment. Um, and um, you know, switch over to, to um, client agent. So everything in the app is searchable. I actually already searched for, for you, know, you can search for usernames, host names, IP addresses, MAC addresses, anything, right? But you know, this particular client has a client agent. And actually, I hadn't shown you a client details page, what that looks like. This is what that looks like, where we capture all the attributes about a client. We capture sort of what it's doing right now or what it's doing when it, we last saw it, as well as if, you know, you open, well, this client's been pretty stationary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this client won't, or probably doesn't have much, but if you click on any of these, you'll actually see the history across time. And so a lot of enterprises use this portion of the product to say, well, wait a minute, you're using this DNS server, but, you know, in the past you've used, I don't know, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8, and why were you using that? That's not company policy. Or, you know, this is the SSID you said you had a problem on, but in actuality, you've been using this other SSID, and that's, that's an issue as well. That's something you can very quickly get here um, in, the, in this attribute side. And when you have a client agent, uh, let me zoom in here over, over here, what you get is additional information from the agent, right? So from an attributes perspective, you're getting, you know, the exact, you know, build version or whatever of, you know, what version of Mac you have, you're getting stuff like the exact wireless driver that you have and the chipset that, that it's operating over. You're getting uh, information around battery charge because sometimes that can have an effect on, on uh, poor performance and so on, um, as, as well as battery level. And um, so, you know, just this kind of additional information shows up to be correlated with the, with the rest of the system. Um, the other side of it is, this event timeline basically captures every connectivity event that a client goes through, whether on wireless or whether, you know, authenticating, IP address, DNS, <coughs> et cetera, connecting to the web. When you have a client agent, you get additional data like, hey, the scan data that the, that the client did, right? So what neighbors did it detect, you know, when you open the wireless icon or whatever, at what signals? And again, this is to kind of reconstruct a little bit of why this client had a poor roam. Right? Like why, did, why is this client associating with this access point really, really far away when there's one right next to it? Well, maybe it's chipset for whatever reason is detecting that one at a much higher signal strength than this one. Um, you know, all that data sort of, to, sort of gets tied in. And then, you know, um, actually something I, I didn't, or I think a question had come up earlier. When we detect an incident, how do we know whether other people are experiencing it at the same time and was it, whether it's a systemic issue or not? So from a client standpoint, when you come to one of these pages, we summarize all the times you, he had poor user experience. Um, and as you can see, our office Wi-Fi is really, really bad right now, <laughs> which is ironic given that we're a user experience company. We just moved offices, and so that's the, that's the excuse, at least for, for now. But What's going on is we detected this client had poor wireless experience in three hours in the last couple of weeks. 
this screen down here shows you at each of the times, did other people that are on the same AP, what percentage of them were having problems? What percentage of the people on the same wireless channel? What percentage on the same SSID? If, if we were looking at a DHCP issue, it would be what percentage of people on the same VLAN are having this problem? What percentage of people using the same DHCP server were having this problem? So the different attributes here sort of get um, displayed based on the type of problem that you're looking at. But the idea here is just from a one client perspective, you can quickly try and determine, at least at a high level, is this a one-off issue? Is this guy the only guy getting affected by this problem? Or is this actually something that is affecting a lot more people? Um, so that's, that's, that's a view that's in the product as well. And then finally, down here, these are all the, the graphs and charts or whatever that, you know, um, this, is, you know, this is a dreaded word for me, but people talk about a single pane of glass. This is the single pane of glass across, you know, all the different protocols. Um, all the different systems that we have, you know, whether it's you know, client agent, seeing client perspective data over here, or you know, this notion of a custom set is the ability to see you know, different graphs simultaneously. Let me just zoom into this recent time period, right? So you know, what I did in the custom set is you know, put a couple of graphs which show the infrastructure's view of the client from what the infrastructure thinks is the signal to noise ratio over here, what the retry percentage is, what the noise level is, and then down there is from the client agent, you know, what percentage it sees and so on. And so all of that data is kind of, you know, um, right there. But this is the this is the more boring part, but it's it's all there. <laughs> so just short of PCAPs, but you know, it's it's all the all the, the raw data is there. So that's, that's what I wanted to talk about in the product. And what I want to do next is uh, talk about an, an interesting side project that, that came up around Apple and Cisco. But any questions before I uh, switch over? Um, just a question. What's the rough price point that the uh, Voyance WAN is coming in at? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's based on committed rate. So obviously, so you know, if you have a one gigabit per second interface, but you're, it's only a 10 megabit per second link, we're going to charge based on the 10 megabit per second. Okay. Um, I think it's, you know, <laughs> I think for a 10 megabit per second, it's like a few hundred dollars per year. For a one gigabit per second, I want to say something like 13K per year on the NetFlow side as, as, as sort of a list. But and, and it can be purchased independently. The WAN can be purchased independently. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep.